His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and promulgated Law 22 of 2023, amending paragraph E of Article 9 of Decree Law 78 of 2006 with respect to insurance against unemployment following its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils. According to the law, paragraph E of Article 9 of Decree Law 78 of 2006, with respect to insurance against unemployment, shall be amended as follows. The government shall submit the audited report on their account after its approval by the Board of Directors to the Representatives Council within the five months following the end of the fiscal year. The audited report shall be approved by a resolution issued by both the Shura Council and the Representatives Council, along with their comments, and be published in the official gazette. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 99 of 2023, appointing a coordinator at the Prime Minister's Office, the PMO, based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1 stipulated that Sarah Ishaq Mathada shall be appointed as coordinator at the PMO with the rank of Undersecretary. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 100 of 2023, appointing the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Health, the SCH, based on a proposal by the Chairman of the SCH and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1 stipulated that Ibrahim Ali al Nawatha shall be appointed as the Secretary General of the SCH with the rank of Undersecretary. His Majesty also issued Decree 101 of 2023, appointing an Undersecretary and an Assistant Undersecretary at the Ministry of Health, based on a proposal by the Minister of Health and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1. Dr Lilwa Rashid Shweta shall be appointed as Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health. Article 2. Dr Samia Ali Bahram shall be appointed as Assistant Undersecretary of Public Health at the Ministry of Health. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 102 of 2023, appointing the Chief Executive and Deputy Chief Executive of Government Hospitals, based on proposal by the SEH and the Prime Minister, and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1. Dr Mariam Athbial Jalapma shall be appointed as the Chief Executive of the Government Hospitals. Article 2. Dr Raja Said Hassan Al Joseph shall be appointed as Deputy Chief Executive of the Government Hospitals. His Majesty also issued Decree 103 of 2023, appointing the Chief Executive of Primary Health Care Centres, based on a proposal by the SCH and the Prime Minister, and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1. Eshlal Faisal Alawi shall be appointed as the Chief Executive of Primary Health Care Centres. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 104 of 2023, appointing the Chief Executive of the National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, based on a nomination by the Supreme Council of Health and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1. Dr Ahmed Mohammed Al Ansari shall be appointed as the Chief Executive of the NHRA. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 105 of 2023, appointing undersecretaries and assistant undersecretaries at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications, based on a proposal by the Transportation and Telecommunications Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. The decree stipulates the appointment of the following officials at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. Marim Adnan Abdullah Ansari, Undersecretary for Land Transportation and Post. Badahud Yosef Mahmoud Al Mahmoud, Undersecretary for Ports and Maritime Affairs. Dr. Kala Abdurrahman Al Hayden, Assistant Undersecretary for Post. Mohammed Yosef Mohammed Al Mabati, Assistant Undersecretary for Maritime Affairs. Salman Nabil Mohammed Shakib, Assistant Undersecretary for Ports Affairs. Sheikh Mohammed bin Ibrahim bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Assistant Undersecretary for Resources and Information. His Majesty issued Decree 106 of 2023, appointing a Director General at the Secretariat General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, based on the nomination of the SCYS Chairman and following the approval of the Cabinet. The decree stipulates the appointment of Nani Mohammed Yosef Bothi as the Director General of the Planning and Resources at the SCYS Secretariat General. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 107 of 2023, appointing an Undersecretary and an Assistant Undersecretary at the Ministry of Youth Affairs, based on proposal by the Youth Affairs Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. 
the decree stipulates the following. Marwan Fouad Salman Kamal should be appointed as Under Secretary for the Youth Affairs and the Ministry of the Youth Affairs. Yusuf Fouad Yusuf Al Haraki shall be appointed as Under Secretary for the Support and Initiatives at the same Ministry. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 108 of 2023, appointing deputies to the CEO of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the LMRA, based on the proposal of the Minister of Labour and after the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1. The following shall be appointed to the LMRA. Nuri Issa Abdullah Mubarak, a Deputy CEO for Enforcement and Protection. Issa Mohammed Issa Ramadan, Deputy CEO for Resources and Information. Ahmed Ibrahim Rashid Al Rabi, Deputy CEO for Operation and Services. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 109 of 2023, appointing a Director General at the Education and Training Quality Authority, the BQA, based on a proposal of the Prime Minister and after the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1. Isma Jafar Akbar Ali is appointed Director General of the National Qualifications Framework and National Examinations at the BQA. The Prime Minister of Egypt, Dr Mustafa Madbouli, received the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, as part of his visit to Egypt to head the Bahraini delegation, participating in the first meeting of the Bahraini Egyptian Governmental Committee for commercial, economic, scientific and technological cooperation. The Minister stressed the depth of the fraternal relations between Bahrain and Egypt, which are based on solid foundations of cooperation in various fields, thanks to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah Al Sisi, with a continuous follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He noted the Kingdom's keenness to advance bilateral relations. He also conveyed the greetings of His Majesty and His Royal Highness to the Egyptian President and the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister asked the Minister to convey his greetings to His Majesty and His Royal Highness and his wishes of continued health and happiness to them and further growth and prosperity to the people of Bahrain. Sheikh Salman noted the importance of the outcomes of the meeting and the initiatives and programmes that were discussed that contribute to the growth and progress of the two countries. He praised the role of the Committee in strengthening bilateral relations and strategic partnerships in the commercial, industrial, economic, scientific, technological, tourism and urban fields. The first meeting of the Egyptian Bahraini Governmental Committee for Commercial, Economic, Scientific and Technological Cooperation was held, headed by the Egyptian Minister of Finance, Dr Mohamed Maith, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The meeting aims to develop bilateral relations in light of the support it receives from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi, with the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Egyptian Prime Minister Dr Mustafa Mabouli. The committee welcomed the agreement of a number of ministries, agencies and public companies in the two countries and 15 cooperation initiatives and 13 MOUs that are being finalised in preparation to be signed. The two sides also agreed to join efforts to deepen bilateral cooperation and increase trade exchange opportunities to enhance investment in intra-trade and exchange visits by trade delegations and participate in commercial exhibitions. The aspects of cooperation included understanding the areas of protecting competition and preventing monopolistic practices to achieve sustainable economic development and regional and Arab integration.
Minister of Works Ibrahim Ben Hassan Al Hawaj paid an inspection visit to several infrastructure development projects in the fourth constituency of the Northern Governorate. In the presence of the Northern Governor Ali bin Al Sheikh Abdul Hussein Al Asfur, the Minister reviewed the details of infrastructure development projects, including roads and sewage systems, being implemented as part of a third package of roads, sewage, and municipal development projects. Al Hawaj affirmed the Ministry is committed to implementing infrastructure development projects that contribute to improving the quality of public services and achieving the desired goals within the government's programme. He also praised the level of achievement in the implementation of these projects. For his part, a Northern Governor emphasised the importance of continuing to enhance communication and coordination with various entities to improve services. He stressed the significance of field visits to monitor the progress of developmental projects, as well as the coordination with relevant entities in line with the principles of community partnership. During her participation in the 2023 Shenzhen Global Innovation and Entrepreneurship Conference, the Minister of Youth Affairs, Ram Bint Najib Tafiki, visited Huawei's premises in Shenzhen, China where she met with the Vice President of the Global Government Affairs at Huawei and the company's representative in the Kingdom of Bahrain. During the meeting, Tafiki emphasised Bahrain's commitment to investing in its youth by providing them with training opportunities at major global companies. The meeting included an overview of the Ministry's programmes that support the skills of young people, as well as discussions on areas of cooperation and joint initiatives in training youth in the field of technology and providing them with additional experiences. The minister toured various departments of the company, where she re received a briefing on China's advances in technology and modern industries. She also visited the Huawei Galileo 5G exhibition. Dafiki highlighted the Kingdom of Bahrain's strong emphasis on enhancing the capabilities of youth in the technology and information technology sectors through establishing constructive partnerships with various global companies, including Huawei. Director General of Legal Affairs and Human Rights at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, a member of the National Committee for Human Rights, Ambassador Dr. Yusuf Abdul Karim Bashiri, headed the Bahraini delegation participating in a second coordinating meeting between the human rights sector at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and its counterpart at the UAE Ministry of Foreign Affairs, held in Abu Dhabi. The meeting ex exhibited areas of joint cooperation and joint coordination, future work projects and exchanging expertise in the field of human rights, particularly in terms of developing a national governmental mechanisms concerned with protecting and promoting human rights in both countries. It discussed ideas and proposals regarding the possibility of twinning certain human rights activities and initiatives presented by both parties, especially on the multilateral working platforms in Geneva and New York. Additionally, the meeting featured an overview of the latest developments related to Bahrain's experience in implementing the prospects of the National Human Rights Plan 2022 to 2026. At the end of the meeting, both sides emphasised the importance of continuing coordination and joint work to develop the human rights system and the rule of law in the two brotherly countries in line with their aspirations and shared objectives. The sixth edition of the Marai Show has captured great attention from a multitude of companies and participating entities involved in the domains of food security and animal production. More in this report. In support of Bahrain's relentless efforts to preserve animal wealth and enhance food security, the sixth edition of Bahrain Animal Production Show Marai was organized under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which reinstates Bahrain's commitment to supporting the achievement of sustainable development goals, particularly those related to the food security system in the kingdom. The Marai Show is one of the prominent public events organized by the Kingdom of Bahrain, attracting a large number of citizens and residents. It showcases animal production projects and features a rich program that includes displays of authentic Bahraini heritage, numerous entertainment, family-oriented and commercial events, as well as scientific workshops conducted by veterinary doctors and specialists. The Marai Show 
is more than just a show. It is a testament to Bahrain's resilience, progress and unwavering commitment to a brighter and more sustainable future. It serves as a platform to showcase and promote Bahrain's cultural heritage, contributing to raising cultural awareness among Bahraini society. The Kingdom of Bahrain witnessed a scattered rainfall across various parts of the country. The Meteorological Department Bulletin issued by the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications indicated that the weather will be cloudy with scattered rain and it will turn relatively cold during the night. The weather forecast indicated that the winds will be northwesterly in general, reaching speeds of up to 30 knots during the day with a drop in temperatures. A temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas forces took hold in the Gaza Strip on Friday, the first respite in 48 days of conflict and has devastated the Palestinian enclave. No big bombings, artillery strikes or rocket attacks were reported, although both sides accused each other of sporadic shootings and other violations. Additional aid is to flow into Gaza, which has been gripped by a humanitarian crisis under weeks of Israeli bombardment that has killed thousands of Palestinians. The truce agreement includes the entry of 200 trucks daily carrying food, relief and medical supplies and about 130,000 litres of diesel fuel, in addition to four trucks loaded with cooking gas during the truce period, which can be extended. Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi affirmed that his country will not accept or allow the displacement of the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip to Egypt. His remarks came during his speech at Long Live Egypt, a people's response in solidarity with Palestine conference. President Sisi started his speech with a minute of silence for the victims of Palestine. He said that the Arab region is facing a serious crisis that adds to the challenges it has suffered for decades. Egypt's president thanked the countries of the world, led by the United States of America, which affirmed its support for the Egyptian position and its rejection of any attempts to displacement of Palestinians to Egypt. He explained that the Rafah crossing will always be open for the flow of food, medical and fuel aid, as well as to receive the wounded and injured. Saudi Defence Minister Prince Khalid bin Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud discussed the situation in Gaza with UK Secretary for State for Defence Grant Shapps. During a phone conversation, both officials reviewed the strategic defence partnership between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Kingdom and ways to strengthen and develop it in areas of joint cooperation. They also discussed the dire situation in the Gaza Strip and ways to end military operations, protect civilians and allow unimpeded flow of humanitarian aid. Advisor at the Royal Court and General Supervisor of the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Centre, KS Relief, Dr Abdullah Al Rabi uh, signed four joint cooperation agreements with a total value of 150 million Saudi rials to provide relief supplies to the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. The agreements were signed with the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees in the Near East, UNRWA. The World Health Organization, the WHO, the International Committee of the Red Cross and the World Food Programme. This comes within the framework of the humanitarian and relief schemes offered by Saudi Arabia through its humanitarian arm at KS Relief in cooperation with the international humanitarian agencies concerned with the provision of relief supplies to the Palestinian people in Gaza. The Prime Minister of the National Unity Government, Abdul Hamid al dabadaba received the Regional Director of the United Nations Development Programme, Abdullah al dabdari who is visiting Libya to hold a series of technical meetings. al dabadaba directed the need for coordination and cooperation in discussing local economic diversifications through the programme experts and the Ministries of Planning, Economy and Trade. He pointed out the necessity of uniting the efforts of the Ministry of Local Government and the UNDP to implement joint programmes in the municipality of Muzak and its reconstruction. For his part, al Dudari expressed his satisfaction with the cooperation programmes in local administration and development and the skills of leaders and systems that are implemented in Libya.